Hey everyone, in one of my previous videos I showed you how to authenticate your SBA using Laravel Sanctum. In this video we will be authenticating that same SBA using Laravel Fortify and Laravel Sanctum. If you have not watched that video I suggest to watch it first if you want to know how to authenticate your SBA using Laravel Sanctum. We will be adding Laravel Fortify to that project and all of its features. For those of you who don't know what Laravel Fortify is, it's a front-end agnostic authentication backend for Laravel that handles authentication, registration and two-factor authentication. It can be a little tricky to add Fortify to an SPA because we are not using traditional blade views, but instead routing and rendering is done on the client side within the SPA. Let's dive right in and explore the features of Laravel Fortify. Before we install Laravel Fortify, let's do a quick review of this project. The Laravel API is running on Fort 5000 in a Docker container in a separate repository from SPA. It has these two routes, login and logout, and a custom auth controller that basically handles login and logout. It also has the API endpoint to fetch the tickets that is protected with Sanctum middleware. The SPA is running on port 3000, which is a Next.js app in a different repository. The index page basically makes API requests to the tickets to get the tickets and displays them in a table. The login page makes the get request to initialize the CSIRF token and makes a post request to the login route to log the user in. All this was covered in the previous video, so you can go ahead and watch that video if you haven't already done so. Let's make sure that we are able to log in using Laravel Sanctum. I'm going to enter the correct credentials and we were able to log in. Let's log out and that works. So we're ready to install Laravel Fortify. Let's install Laravel Fortify using Composer. We also need to run this command to publish the migration and config files as well as the Fortify's actions. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's migrate the database. Next we need to register Fortify service provider within the providers array of our app configuration file. We open the app configuration file and add it right here. Let's see what this provider does. It basically lets Fortify know which classes to use for certain actions. For example, it lets Fortify know that to create user, you should use create new user action. You're able to customize this and change this to a different class if you want, or customize the create new user action itself. Laravel Fortify's configuration file allows us to specify which features we want to be enabled by default and which features we want to be disabled for our application. We can see that these features are enabled by default. We are going to be focusing on the user authentication in this video, so we could disable all these features for now. I will implement and go over each feature in separate videos. So let's comment this out and save. There are a couple of things we need to change on this specific Laravel installation because as you know it already is set up with Laravel Sanctum authentication, which I went over in the previous video. As I discussed before, I have this auth controller that handles login and logout, and we can delete this controller because authentication will be handled by Laravel Fortify. So let's go ahead and delete that. And also we could remove the endpoints for that. Because Laravel Fortify is a headless authentication library, we need to specify the views for our actions. For example, we need to instruct Fortify which view to return when user visits the login page. But there is one problem. We have an SBA and we don't have blade views. And the routing is handled on the client side, so we can't specify the views. If this was a non-SBA Laravel application, then we would copy this and add it within our Fortify service provider within the boot method. And here we would specify the login view and then we would also specify the view for the registration and so on. But because this is an SPA, this won't work. All the routing and rendering is done on the client side. So instead, we don't need to register any views at all. In fact, we need to disable all the default routes that Laravel generated. If we open the terminal and run phpartisan, route list, we can see that some routes have been already registered by Laravel Fortify. Some of them are for the password confirmation, uh, there is a logout, there is login, and there is a get login. So what we need to do is we need to disable these default routes and we need to create our own routes because we will be handling the routing and displaying ourselves. Luckily Laravel Fortify has this option to disable these default routes. All we need to do is within the register method we need to call Fortify ignore routes and now if we go ahead and type php artisan route list 
we only see the routes that we explicitly defined. Now we need to open the Fortify's routes file from the vendor directory and copy those routes to our API routes file. So let's go ahead and do that. And as you see within this routes file, it registers these routes if the specific feature is enabled. Also, we will not be using the web middleware. Instead, we will be using Sanctum middleware. So let's copy these routes and put them within our API routes file. Let's also group them with our Sanctum middleware. Because we will only be focusing on the authentication part for this video, we can comment out all other routes for now. I will be uncommenting and implementing each feature in separate videos. So let's comment these out. Next, if we go back to our SPA, as you can see, we're making the post request to the slash login route, but we copied our routes within API routes file, which means that we need to make requests to API login. Now I could change this on the front end, or I could simply move this out of API routes file and move it into the web routes file. Also, we don't need the login route to be within the Sanctum middleware because we're not protecting the login route. So let's go ahead and take this out of here and move it within the web routes file. Let's import. We should also get rid of this uh, route because we're not rendering any views. When user visits slash login, they're visiting on our SPA domain and not our uh, backend domain. So this would not work. Because we already have this routing implemented on our Next.js app, we can simply get rid of this. And that should be good. And the last thing we can do is move this route within the group and delete that. Let's try to log in now and see what we get. I'm going to open the developer tools and enter the wrong credentials first. And we get 422 auth failed error. So this means that we're hitting the API correctly. Laravel Fortify works, Laravel Sanctum works, but we're getting this uh, error message. Well, this is not exactly error message because we haven't configured the localization in our application. Let's go ahead and do that quick. As you notice, I don't even have the resources directory here and the package JSON because this is just the API. The backend does not have any front end in here. The front end is handled within the Next.js app. So I'm going to add the resources directory here. And I'm going to add the language directory. And also we need the English directory. Oops, that needs to be in. And within here, we need to add auth dot php which basically just returns an array and if we go back to the error message we see that it's auth dot failed auth is the file name and failed is the key so we go back to this file and add the failed key and specify the error message we can say invalid credentials and let's try to log in now and see if that worked and it did we're getting the correct error message now so let's try to log in with the correct password and see if that works. And we're in. The authentication with Laravel Fortify and Laravel Sanctum worked. Let's sign out. That also works. If we try to access the dashboard, we can't. It redirects back to the login page. And let's try to log in again. And that works. So this is it for this video. There is a lot of flexibility with Laravel Fortify. It's a really great package and Taylor and Laravel team did an awesome job. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more videos as we expand on Laravel Fortify and implement the other features such as registration, forgot password and two-factor authentication. See you on the next video.